Live from the Boston Duncan Music Lounge, make some noise for Tony, Tony, Tony! Dwayne, Timothy, and Raphael, the Tonys are in the building. Keep it going, keep it going! Keep it going, keep it going! <laughs> what up? Welcome in, guys, welcome in! Honored to be here. Nice. Can we? We're gonna get that it's mic there. It's an honor to be here. We've been coming here for years, but you know, Ian, it's it's been a while for us together. It's definitely been a while, and we we super got excited when we heard about the tour, and then even more excited when we found out you guys are coming in. So, how's it been? How's the road life been already? Because you guys have done some shows already. You guys are on the road. I see a full schedule in front of you guys. Feel like riding a bike? What is it? <laughs> Well, when we get together, it's like riding the bike yep. because we all uh, pick up where the other one left off or whatever. But the energy is great for us. You know, we're used to tour buses. Yeah. And but the best thing is sometimes it's flights and you know and and tour bus. So it's good. We get a chance to really get close with the people, and that's what what it's all about. Well, everyone's talking about how you guys haven't toured in 25 years. That doesn't mean you right. guys haven't been busy. I mean, you guys have done so much stuff behind the scenes, still performing, still rocking. Just together, you guys haven't rocked like this in a while. So it must be a great feeling to just come back full circle and just and do it for the fans because you guys don't have to do this clearly you guys have the music you guys have the catalogs no correction we have to do you, this you have to do this or is this for the fans or for yourself oh no, man for the passion and for the yes. energy for the you know spirit we have to okay. I mean, me i'm just uh, i love playing live and that's really my main thing my Rep brother on the other hand he loves playing live as well but he's a studio rat yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's what she is. Right. So he stays busy. And Tim is, a, you know, he's all of it. He, but he's more of a um, a homebody studio rat. Right? He has his own right. studio, but even though I never hear nothing from your damn studio. Yes, you, you do, know? Dwayne. Yes, you, do, Dwayne. <laughs> you got the secret track. So you guys can thank Dwayne for all this. This Is all is this all you do, you're doing right now? Oh, yes. yeah. You know what? They're going to wake up. They just, I've been here on coffee and everything. They're just popping in. Yeah, we literally just got here. Well, we got we got a lot to talk about. I know you guys got a, um, you guys got the shows going on. Excited to be on the road. This is a full circle for me, too. I was a, a DJ for Steve Harvey back in L.A. in 92.3. Okay. Um, I was a street team member at the time. So when we did a big show with you, guys i had to go man the doors and everything like that so i wasn't able to come say hi to you guys wow. and now i'm interviewing guys yeah. in boston after all these years so it's an honor to sit here with you guys oh, thank Very you cool. thank yeah. you one of my favorite records i mean you guys have so many for days but that let's get down one of my favorite rappers producers dj quick was on that and that's still we do an old school mix here and the requests on some of your records that still keep coming in time and time again after all these years you guys have have fought through everything with the new music that's coming out right now and with the world of social media, do you guys feel like a lot of your music is, timeless music doesn't go away, right? And with the social media, do you feel like you guys got a nice research on classic music to show everybody? What do you think? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> let me just say this. Okay, we, we've seen just about every format except for uh, A track. You know, we go to set, you know, uh, 45s. Wax and everything else. We also came out in a time when you know you didn't stuff didn't get shared and stuff like that as as you know like it is now. As soon yeah. as you do it, you can put something out the next hour or whatever. So uh, in these different times, I, we we like it, but it took me a while because I'm just from another school of being able to open up to social media like that because I've always like you don't show it until it's done until it's ready. Um, so I, I like every aspect of it right now, nice. but I especially like touring now. Yep. And that's me. I love the stage. No, I love it, man. We've got Tony, Tony, Tony in here right now. When it comes to, um, I, I heard about your billboard move that you did. You, That's how you announced you were ready to get back with everybody and or just surprise everybody. If you guys don't know this billboard story, go ahead and so why don't you guys explain Tell what happened in, with uh, this well, billboard. I just we, we had a photo session. I put the guys together. I said we should, you know, put a, just do a photo session. We had... Most of the clothes was there, and some, one of our stylists, Kelly, who, who's been working with us since 1988, um, pulled her back in. We put some clothes together, did a photo session studio, and then I was like, uh, this, I should put up a billboard in the middle of East Oakland, where we all grew up at, and it's uh, right off of uh, Grand Lake Theater. It's like a old theater, classic theater, and then right across the street is the 580 freeway. And right when you enter the 580, it's this big sign, you know. And I was like, yeah, I want that billboard right there. <laughs> and I just, I didn't tell the guys. I didn't tell the management team. I didn't tell any promoters. I didn't tell Live Nation. I didn't tell anybody I was dealing with. I just put it up because I hadn't picked any 
by any promoters yet. I just put it up and see what kind of feedback we get. And the feedback was, it was crazy. And I they think Tim called me and, and said, did you put up a sign in Oakland? I'm like, no, why? <laughs> and Dwayne called and said the same thing. I'm like, no, why? And so that's how I started finding out, you know, then the people start sharing it. And then that's the way we start, you know, calling like Sean G at Live Nation and saying yes. like, yeah, be ready to tour. And I felt like, that was needed because that's where it all started in Oakland. Mm -hmm. We we yep. we're from a neighborhood where we played in a lot of like, local bands, and you know high schools, junior high. We played in all the school bands, all the talent shows, all over the Bay Area. So I felt like the proper place to drop that that message was in Oakland. That's a great way of doing it. When I heard that story, I started laughing because even your own team didn't know what you what was going on, no. and you were just trying to create a buzz. And it, it, between yourselves, yeah. of like, is this worth doing again? It seems we like. took the photo shoot what some months before and the whole yeah. bit. And you know, we've been to the table before about going out again and wherever. Of course, and then yep. Raphael would get busy on a score or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So then you know, we continue. Me and Tim have been carrying the the, the, the whole the the luggage of, of Tony Honey Tony and bringing other artists through the lens of Tony Honey Tony right. until. We knew it would happen one day. So when he took the picture, I never even got any copies of it and stuff. I was like, oh, you just talking. You know? <laughs> next month, you're going to say something there. And right, so we're right, going right. to say, and I'm sitting out in Atlanta on the ranch fishing or something, and somebody texts a picture to me. I'm looking on my phone. Like, some, like oh, who superimposed that picture on there? <laughs> right? it's, and then she said, no, that's on the billboard. I say. Fool, you superimpose that. That's a picture we took. I don't have a copy, but that's a picture right. only Ray had. And that's what made me call and say, hey, man, did you, when you said yeah, that, yeah, you that's started it. laughing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But then that let us know that he's ready to tour. See, but that's what, it's such a crazy time right now because you don't know what's real and what's fake. And if you guys are even fooling yourselves when it comes yeah. to that, you know? back in the day, you knew a billboard popped up, it was a billboard. It was a billboard. It was a right? billboard, yeah. <laughs> now people, are, people are, are thinking things that are real are fake and fake are real. It's just such a weird world right now. Right. But, but you can't fake being live. You can't fake so being live. So you go out to the people, they can yeah. smell you, they can smell you sometimes. It, man, I want to smell <laughs> it's the original, that's the best it's the, it's the it. original street team work. Yeah. That's, that's all yes. I, I was trying to do is just bring that original um, back to the streets yep. sort of promo. Yeah. Like, this is us. You know, look at it. This is what we look like now. Um, this is what the style look like. I also want us to come back and not look like the old guys who try to come back and be young and be cool. <laughs> like we, we pretty oh. much we pretty much have we pretty much have a good fashion sense of what we want to do when we right. want to do it. And I, I sort of wanted to come back with that fashion edge of people saying, you know, we started like that. You know, we started pretty much wearing like, you know, stuff from your boy London yeah. stuff. We never really looked yeah. like any bands from the U.S. So it. when we performed, that's you know I want to put that message back out there, and that's what we did. Like on our first tour, remember uh, Earth Wind and Fire didn't know that we were a band. Well, that's they a different don't. thing. Just, that, I'm talking about the clothes. <laughs> oh, 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 well, I mean no, no, you know I'm the talking, clothes. I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. talking. I'm not talking about. Don't the, judge us right now. The music. Yeah, nah, you guys are looking good, man. And and coming from the Bay, um, you know there's there's some music that get out of there, but the Bay Area, man. I did a gig not too long ago, and my guy Shabazz and J Espinosa were there. Thank God, because the Bay has this music that stays in the Bay, and you could become a huge superstar. These guys were rocking for two hours with Bay records that I've never even heard, but the crowd was just going crazy. Right. How do we get that music in this time that we're in right now to resonate like you guys did? Because clearly there's a movement. There's a Bay Area sound, there's a hyphy sound, there's a, there's a movement out there, but it only stays in the Bay. It's the only, it's funny, it's the only place that syndicated radio doesn't really work in. Right. <laughs> you know, you, cause, because people need to know what's happening at the high school in the area. Yep. You know, it's the only uh, place where, you know, every nationality is saying hella together. You know, hella this, hella that, yeah. hella that. <laughs> yep. You know, it's T-shirts. It's like this, it's a regional thing, but yeah. you, it's, it's, it's weird. It's, it's weird how you can just have, be big and have a regional record. My nephew, uh, Trey, he's, he brings me records all the time. I found out about... Even though Larry June is pretty big everywhere, but I yep. found out Larry June about Larry June through my my nephew. And I'm like, well, who is this? I'm like, yo, it's crazy. And they're doing well out there. Like, in well, that, they, they do amazing. well in that area financially and, and and walking around. They're superstars. But you come out of the bay, it's like, oh, we gotta do some work. <laughs> you know what gotta I mean? Gotta do some work, yeah. So great job for you guys, man. You guys you guys fought through all that and and years and years of it. Timothy, when um, I'm gonna talk to you real quick, what okay. came first? <laughs> The the, uh, the conversation about the tour or getting back together about this album? 
We uh, well, actually, we've been talking about making a record for years. Okay. Me and Raphael always get together, make um, ideas, and just come together and just vibe. So that's pretty like common. Um, that's been a conversation for a long time with you guys all yeah, the time, though, right? Yeah, but yeah. now it's really going to happen, right? I think everybody's been... Yeah, oh, yeah. no, no, no. It's happening okay. now. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yes. you know, it's official. It's official, yes. Official. You know, okay, record. so which one came first? Oh, since the, you guys are talking about the album for years anyway, so that's... Yeah, so I would say that's kind of yeah. was first. And then, like, this tour just made that even jumpstart. Nice. Even higher. I uh, asked on Twitter, too, or on social media if they had questions for you. One guy actually asked me directly to you, Timothy, uh, for an upcoming drummer. Two questions here. Sorry, pup. What's your favorite song to bang to, and what advice do you have for me? I feel like I do this 24-7, but my band doesn't go have the same focus as I do. Did he say bang to? Yeah, like which one do you just like rocking out to? What's your favorite <laughs> song to rock out to? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, with the group? <laughs> or, just, or just period? Just period, yeah. Um... I wouldn't say I have a favorite. It's a lot of songs I like to just jam. A lot of, st- um, a lot of it is just like what you're playing at the time. Yep. And you get a vibe and like a feeling. So I don't think I have like a favorite song okay. per se. I just like to play. And then obviously this person is a drummer, so he's yeah. asking some advice about if the team is not going as hard, what, what advice do you have for him? If the team is not going as hard? As him. He thinks he's going 24-7 for uh-huh. this, but his band members aren't. Oh, that's too bad. That's what? <laughs> that's too bad, yes. Yeah, he needs to, he needs to bring them up to speed. He needs to speed. quit. <laughs> yeah, he needs to, Rafael, what is it? He needs to quit. He needs yeah. to start another Find band. a new going. band. Yeah, yeah there you go. I, I, I think that same thing. Yeah, because like, yeah, the drummer not, is the uh, heart of it. Yeah. You follow the drummer. Yeah. Ray Parker would say, not tomorrow, but this evening. Yes, this evening. There you go. Okay. Uh, a couple more from uh, social media, and then these guys have a couple questions, too. So we're going to get into that. Uh, this one's for Dwight. Uh, sorry, Dwayne. Sorry, my bad. Uh, who talks the most Why? ish out of the group? Me. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, he, of course. He owned up to it. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, have, I just especially when I had a nice cup of coffee yep. and I had some good sleep. Oh, yeah, He's get, the biggest trash talker, you guys. You gonna, you gonna get? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Like she, um, <laughs> He's the biggest talker. He's discovering. <laughs> he's, just, he's discovering himself okay. again. You know. <laughs> Ooh. All right, uh, Raphael. One here for you. Um, if you don't, and if you don't know anyone in the business, what's an advice you can get to get into the circle to even be talked about getting songs in a movie? How does someone break into that, into that world? Because you definitely got to be connected. I think now is just having a great publisher. Okay. And just tell them you want to you want to grab some sinks for a film, and you don't even have to have a record deal or anything like that. I think it's about just meeting publishers and say, uh, I would like to get some music sings on my songs and just send them to different um, directors, different agencies like that. Okay, nice. All right. Um, what's the worst part of being on the road? Not stage, not anything musically or on the road. What's the worst part of the The traveling? worst part, you don't stay long enough to really... Um, well, I like it now better than when we toured, when we were super hot with stuff because, you know, the label had just... St- control of everything. You're okay. here, you're going, but you don't get, you meet people, you get a chance, and it's not as much as like right now, we hang out. So I think the, the um, to me, that's what it is. You, you don't get a chance to really get um, a real feel for the, the city or the state you're in because you're in and out right. from the airport to the hotel, to the venue, to a station or so, back to the venue, perform, next morning you're out. Mm-hmm. So that would probably be the only thing to me. Okay. And what's the best part about being on the road, not the stage part? Raphael, I'll go to you with this one. Not performing. The best part about it is, you know, seeing people that you, when you started in 1988 and yeah. you're seeing some fans who now have kids and they're bringing out, you know, two and three generations mm-hmm. to hear what you did and, and letting them experience what they experienced uh, for, from a while ago. I think that's the best thing. I love it. All right. We got some uh, questions from uh, the audience over here, too. Uh, let's go to Janelle first. <laughs> Why me first? <laughs> you wanted a, you wanted a little secret from them, right behind you. I wanted to know, did you? This not working. It's on. We can hear you. Oh. I wanted to know, did you guys come with any extra tickets for all of us? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh yeah, we did. Um, actually, it said Ticketmaster. You should call. <laughs> <laughs> you got jokes, yeah. huh? <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't the answer. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, they don't know, and you guys don't know, but I was told that they did get you guys tickets for tonight or for tomorrow's show. So congratulations. You guys are all going. Yes. (laughs) I like how we did that. Yes. (laughs) So you guys are going to the show, right? Give a round of applause for them going to the show. Yeah. That's hot. 
All right. <laughs> Sade in the back. Sade, you had a great question earlier. Go ahead and stand up real quick. Put me on the spot. All right. Um, my question was like, you know, when um, on TikTok, anniversary became big, like they kind of remixed it. Like, how does it feel to kind of see that come full circle and see like the newer generation learn your music? Uh, it feels good. I just always felt like if you make good music and not just make music that could be hot. I always say, you know, hot gets cold, right? But good music just stays good. And so when this generation notices that music is is honored to for them to use it and you know until you know, they they picked a very good song and a very good part of the song <laughs> to use yeah. social media really brought that song i mean everyone used it on their anniversaries and stuff like that but the fact that 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 just turned into a whole it's it's a guaranteed song to use on your anniversary. but to be honest the song never actually went anywhere it's it's been playing since we made it but you know to watch kids make a dance to it yep. That was a pretty fresh dance, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you know what? The, the key word is a song. There's a difference between, between songs and tunes. Tunes, here and gone, songs last forever. Yeah. And um, that's, that's a great honor to, to hear your stuff. That's just the Lonely Tunes, bro. <laughs> that's who? That's just the Lonely Tunes. <laughs> that yeah, cartoon, so last forever. You know? No. I'm oh, oh you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I started a, a new night in Boston where it's called Disconnect, where I'm literally taking people's phones at the club. Oh. And it started a couple of weeks ago. It's a slow build, but I heard so you guys you are doing... take somebody's phone at the club? We're blocking it. For real? Because I want people to dance and have a good time. I come from that world. Oh, you I come else, from that world. Uh, what? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, it's a good thing. No, I, I think I think um, for us it was a it was a struggle to get it to get it done with different people. I thought it could be done. I just felt that they could the audience could enjoy it more. Yep. You know, enjoy it. like this lady right here. If she just put her phone down and just look at me and talk. <laughs> there you go. Like see you you can see me, right? That's better than your phone. I see you. But <laughs> you know, if you go my friend went to uh, the, to the Chinese wall and he said he had his camera out and he was gonna film and then he said, Nah, I'm just gonna have this memory for myself and then I'm gonna come back and tell you about it. So I wanted you know, I knew people like Bob and Dylan did it, Solange did it, Jack White did it, Dave Chappelle does it. And I enjoy going to watch Dave Chappelle without my phone. So I was like, that would be really cool. We have a huge catalog if people could sit and listen to our music without any phones. And it's been, I'm, I'm telling you, it's been the, the best experience. You know, we wasn't trying to be like bullies and take the phones. We just knew it would be a great experience. And the feedback that we're getting back is amazing from people. They like low key. I'm kind of glad they took the phones. It's yeah. like a, we feel like one family in one room. Yeah. They're singing the songs that, you know, I could see them, they could see me. It's no yeah. plastic in my face. Right. You know, no just lights. no lights in my face. <laughs> I already pay for lights. I don't need your light. <laughs> so fans that come to our concert just come to be in the moment. moment yes. Be in the moment. I feel like that it, it's definitely missing. And again, we come from a world where we we had that and we just want to enjoy it. And it's like, you paid for it to see them. You guys won this for you. This is for you guys. Enjoy it. And I love that you guys did that. Especially you guys you guys are, are jamming out there. Like, look at everything that's happening. You know, you guys aren't just yeah. sitting up there singing one thing. Like, there's a lot of stuff happening while you guys are performing. Our show is a journey. I mean, Raphael designed the whole show from top to bottom and I have to say out of all the years I like people talk about when we separated and went separate ways but that's what the spirit was 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 made for yeah. because we learned so much and we were able to work with so many different people and bring other people to the table that uh like right now it's it's just beautiful to see it be a, a live thing for us three together right. it's three different in, uh, energies on the stage but when we come together we all know it's something different. Yeah. We can't figure it out, but it's something different when we're together. I love it, man. We got one more over here from uh, Kenny. Kenny had a great question, uh, taking it back to old school with this one. Yes, back in the 80s, when did you guys realize that you wanted to come together and make your first album? Well, I think it started with me. Uh, my brother was in a band, a lot of bands for me, so he went to these schools before me and sort of just tore the schools up, like, really good. Like, he's a great musician, so... When I came through, I pretty much got a free ride if I could play. And people were like, are you Dwayne's brother? I'm like, yeah. So I'm automatically pushed in the top level. So he was already in a band. So for me, when I saw the Brothers Johnsons when I was a kid, I just look at the album covers, and I was like, oh, I could do that with my brother. We could be like the Brothers Johnsons. And then and when I got to high school, Tim went to a different school, and he was like a like this uh, 
this prodigy played drums and organ in church. Everybody was talking about him. I was like, I got to meet this dude, right? And so when I met him, probably in ninth, 10th grade, I went to this high school. In my junior year, the sophomores was leaving, and so I recruited Tim to come to my school and play drums. And I played bass for this choir. And then after that, I said, you got to meet my brother. And then this happened. And it was just magic after that. Yeah, just the three of us jamming in said, the house. He was the one who wanted to make records. Mm. You know, he, he knew how to shop demos. He knew how to put demos together. He was looking at um, some of the people that was writing for Whitney Houston that was in the Bay Area. Like, they had songwriting um, uh, camps. Yeah. And he knew about the songwriting camps. I never heard of anything like that. All I really wanted to do was work at a record store or play for somebody's band. <laughs> so he was the one who led the, uh, the pack in to making records. Nice. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of uh, talent in your blood. Does it come from even before that with the parents? Is, is there... Yeah. What's the musical background there? Brothers, father. Yeah. Father was a, a hardcore 95 hard labor working guy. Got it. And a fighter and, and a boxer. Mm -hmm. But he didn't... Um, he said he had too many kids to play the music game. <laughs> so, I was, yeah. That's what he told me. Yeah, cause he could sing. He could yeah, sing. He told me I was a mistake kid. So. <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said it with a smile on his face. We got one more. I forgot, L, real quick. L, what was your question, L? Oops. <laughs> Oops. I Heart and Duncan, Pup Dog, and Jammin' 94 or 5. Um, I appreciate the family part aspect of that brought you all together. Hope you play whatever you want. Because I'll be there tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we got to play that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. That's the showstopper. Yes. But um, my question is, what collaborations have you all been doing, say, within the past 10 years? Because I know Raphael Sadiq went solo. But what else has been going on when you all were apart? Oof. And what have you contributed? Because I know you contributed a lot yeah. to others that we might not know about. Can you share that with us? Well, I, this guy is like does like stuff with, uh, he, he had the whole city doing gardening. Yeah. And plants and everything. Dwayne went I, I come up in a different generation where, you know, everybody was from the South. We all had gardens and you know, had plants, whatever else. But I also come, come up uh, when uh, there was musicians and bands everywhere. So I learned how to play the blues on the streets. You know, some of the first stuff I learned was Jimi Hendrix. And... Um, but so uh, our community was a place where, you know, you, you developed your craft in the community. There's bands all over, like there's rappers everywhere. And you battle, and you, you get your butt kicked in a jam. You go back to next week and come back the next week and learn that Van Halen lick mm -hmm. or whatever else. So that's, you know, that, that was my thing. But um, so it, it's really different. Garden, man. I set you up for the garden, man. With the garden. The plants. <laughs> The plants. The plants. Okay, so we got a song plant. called no, The Plant no. to Say the Plant. The kids. the kids. I mean, this dude. I well, okay, so I believe in passing the information down to the next generation. Okay, so let's say in 1995, 96, when we supposedly broke up. We never broke up. We just, we sold a million copies, and we just walked away and started doing different things. He went solo. In 95, I signed the group Destiny's Child with Beyonce and a whole bit, and I moved them to Oakland. So I really got into developing young artists, but I thought about the mentality of what I was able to witness. I was like, okay, they got to experience it. If you can't perform for this many people as if it's thousands of people or two people, you ain't nothing. You got to be able to walk into and, and lift the spirits of people. And that's what I, now from from Destiny's Child, I went into working with Alicia Keys. I'm developing Keisha Cole, working with Zendaya, working with the young lady you guys call her, working with uh, Kaylani through. Yeah. yeah so awesome. I've been working with nothing but the next generation. And that's my passion. So I was excited to come to Boston because I knew about the music and the arts out here as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, we're going to get it in out here. It was you so know? funny because Wyclef was doing um, uh, like music school. Him and Swiss were actually students at Berkeley Music out here. You see what I mean? After Grammys. Dope. Yeah. You know? Dope. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, yeah, he get it. He's got that, that high pro glow too. He got right. that spirit. And it's about passing the energy because this, what I feel like is what Tony and Tony, they want to call it Neil Soul sound or whatever, we developed something that we didn't even know we were developing. We found that the world is a keyboard. We got it for 75 bucks. Now the keyboard is, what, 10 Gs it costs, whatever. But we made it popular through songs like Anniversary, Lay Your Head on My Pillow, 
kept everything on, uh, you know, on our projects. That was our secret weapon. Yep. And now you have what's called Neo Soul. When D'Angelo started using it and Eric about doing it, just everybody. And so I'm, I'm honored on that. But we're not going to walk away from this. We created this. And we're going to ride it. We're going to pass it to the next generation so they can take it to the next level. I love it. Jules had a great question. You guys have done so much stuff behind the scenes. You want to ask him about the question about how, what songs do we, do we not know about that you guys were involved with? Because we just found out recently, you know, Lady is, is, is connected with you guys. Destiny's Child, you guys signed them. Uh, Alicia Keys and all that. What's something that we wouldn't know about that you guys had your hands in that, are, that is huge right now? You'd have to a Google lot. me to figure it out. Because <laughs> he don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, it's I think really the true. latest thing, right? like Bilal, I work with Bilal. Of course, yep. I work with D'Angelo. I work with, I did Cuff It with Beyonce. Um, That's the one, Cuff It. Uh, Brent Fias. Yep. I work with Daniel Caesar, that little dude. Yeah. <laughs> big dude now. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's a big artist, yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's a big deal. Um, we just, like I was telling him, we just like, uh, we just like, love music, right? So if somebody could use what you have, they usually take it to the next level. You know, um, when you work with somebody like, you know, Beyonce or Ben Fayez or D'Angelo, really, they don't, they actually don't really need help. They just need to find something to take to the next level. So I like to work with people that like to spar with me who know who they are and know who they want to be. I don't really like to work with artists that don't know who they are and who they want to be, because that's not me. I, I can, I come from a band where we all sort of knew who, what we were, and it was easy because he knew who he was, he knew who he wasn't, and we, we were trying to, we figured it out together. So as far as production for me, it's like, um, I don't call myself a producer, I just say like, you know, I'm just in your band, if we come up with something, Mm -hmm. No pressure if we do, if we don't. And that's the way our band, that's how we came up with all those records. We went in there, we didn't know what we were doing. It just all happened. Yeah. There it is, man. That actually answered that last question. Working behind the scenes with all these legends, who do you guys look for before working with an artist? And I think you just answered that, that, that common denominator. Well, I know we're about to have that, um, that EAS test go off and everybody's phone's about to go off in a second, but I just want to say thank you guys for all the timeless music for all these thank years, you. man. Thank you for stopping by here. I know you say you need to do this, but we really do appreciate you guys and uh, for all the timeless music. Round of applause real quick. Real thank you. Dwayne, Timothy, and of course, Rafael Sadiq. Tony, 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 the Tony. Duncan Music Lounge, Pub Dog, Jim and 94.5, we out. <laughs>